Hello everybody, welcome to the fifth in the Morale Motori webinar series. My name is Stephen Machen. I'm an applications engineer with Morale USA here in Norcross, Georgia. And the talk today is about marine generators and motors. There'll be a Q&A window as usual. I will tell you something about marine society classification and the societies that we work with. I'll introduce you to some of our generator products and some of our motor products. And I'll talk about systems where the same machine can be a generator or a motor. And in the end, I'll give you some idea of what testing facility you have in Italy. So some examples of places where Morelli machines are used. Here is a ferry vessel. You could have propulsion motors, thruster motors. You could have main generators, emergency generators, maybe even PTO, PTI systems that I will talk about later. Here is a large dredge vessel. And I can say that we supply some 6,000 horsepower motors for the dredge pumps on this very vessel. Here's an offshore fixed platform being serviced by Jacob Barge. Uh, you're going to find winch motors, hydraulic pump motors, fan motors, fire pump motors and generators on both of these types of structures. Here's a list, it's not entirely comprehensive, of the machines that you find powered by Morelli motors or Morelli generators. Marine classification societies, what are they? They're non-governmental, so they're not associated with any country. They establish standards for design and construction and maintenance of vessels and structures. They will approve the design of components and machinery. They will do surveys and inspections during construction and manufacture and they'll do tests of our machines after they're made. Now, worldwide, there are 50 or so societies. We don't work with them all. Here's the main ones that we work with. Everybody knows the American Bureau of, Ship Bureau of Shipping. There's a Russian classification society, the uh, Japanese, the Chinese, the Korean, and these other ones are all uh, European. Marine machines, when compared to industrial, let's have a look at what the differences may or may not be. So they may be derated for higher ambient temperatures. They will be if they're classified for sure. ABS uh, decides that we need to design for 50 degrees centigrade ambient. The rest of the societies say 45 is okay. They may have tropicalization under windings to protect them against uh, humid atmospheres. They may have anti-condensation heaters to stop condensation and windings. Uh, TEFC motors will have a drainage hole for condensation and they may have marine society classification. They don't have to be classified to be marine. They may be associated with a shipyard and a hull. If they're new build vessels, then they will have to be associated with the shipyard on the whole to get certification. But sometimes we provide spare motors and generators which cover a, a fleet of vessels, say, and then they're not associated with the vessel um, and the shipyard. <coughs> uh, to be classified, they have to have test witness by society representatives, but they can be marine motors without classification. Uh, if they're 100 kilowatts or over, they're going to have a certified shaft. Um, they will have extraordinary painting for protection in marine environments. It's a three part system with primary epoxy and acrylic. The standard is two coats, but we may put more coats. It's possible. Depending on sometimes the offshore oily environment, you put more coats on. Okay, some of Morelli Marine generators. I think this is the largest one we make. It's an open drip proof, ODP, 
medium and high voltage, we call it MJHM, the cooling index is 0 1, which means there's a fan on the shaft blowing water directly through the machine across the windings. That's the best cooling you can get. So for a given power, these machines will be smaller than some others. 12,500 kVA is the biggest we make now. Um, and you'll find these on main generators and shaft generators. We also have a totally enclosed water to air cooling or TWAC, uh, medium voltage. We call them MJHRM. Um, the IC, the cooling units on these 81W, 81W means water to air. Uh, but their IP is much higher, so they're protected against more and smaller particles. 11,000 kVA generators is the biggest we make. Um, and again, may not shaft generators, but where you need a higher IP, because you're going to need a bigger machine, but it's going to be better protected. Uh, the most popular, let's say, is ODP, low voltage machine. Um, we call it MJBM, and it's IC01 again. Uh, IP maximum 44 if you put filters. Without filters, it's IP23. 6,500 kVA is the biggest one we make here. And generally, it's main or emergency generators you'll find in service. Other marine generators, um, totally enclosed water air cooling again, but low voltage this time. We call it MJRM. It's the same cooling IC81W. And again, IP44 all the way to 56. The smallest we do is 130 kVA, biggest is 6,500. And again, main generators, emergency generators, shaft generators. And we also do totally enclosed air-to-air -air cooling, or TEAAC, in low voltage. Uh, we call it MJVM. Uh, according to the next here is IC611, up to IP56 again. 5,600 kVA is the biggest one we make, but we do make them quite small, at 80 kVA. Again, main emergency and shaft generator should make these. Some marine motors, uh, TWAC, which you've heard, totally enclosed water to air cooling, low voltage motor. It is uh, a B4V, we call it, and it has um, up to IP55. And 10,000 kilowatts is the biggest in the low voltage. Uh, you'll find these in main propulsion and thrusters. We've got ODP again, the same as the generators, low voltage, They're very similar in construction except for the rotor. Um, we call them C3M or C4M. IC is 01 and IP 23 to 44 with filters. 200 kilowatts to 10,000 kilowatts, quite big. And again, you'll find them in main propulsion and thruster service. My favorite motor is the totally enclosed water cooled motor in both low voltage and medium voltage. We call them B5J and B5H. So these are IC71 water jacket motors, so the IP55. Uh, 330 kilowatts the smallest, 4,000 kilowatts is the biggest. Thrusters and propulsion is the main service for these. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more about the water jacket motors. They're so good at variable speed and constant torque, especially low speed because of the nice water. They got cooling water all the time. They're very compact compared to air cooled or water air cooled motors. The cooling water flow rate is much, much less than is needed for uh, water air motors of the same power. And they're quieter because they're wrapped in a nice water jacket which absorbs sound up to four megawatts, as we said, and we'll make them in any configuration. We customize them and we're improving continuously with these motors. Other marine motors, we have the another TWAC, um, low and medium voltage. We call it B5V, 
B5VH, uh, AD1W for water cooling again, maximum IP55, 10,000 kilowatts. I'm talking horsepower, we've got two of these um, 6,000 horsepower motors on that dredge vessel that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and you'll also find them in propulsion and thruster service, as well as pumps. Totally out enclosed fan cooled. These are used all over the cruise ships, actually. We do them in A5M, which is aluminium, B5M, which is uh, cast iron frames. The cooling is IC411, that's a external fan cooling, IP55 to 56. We go down all the way to 11 kilowatts with these, but no bigger than 1900 kilowatts. Um, auxiliaries, pumps, fans, winches, Okay, I said I'd talk about PTO, PTI systems. Uh, there can be PTI systems with synchronous and asynchronous machines. Let's talk about asynchronous first. Imagine a ship, if you will, with a main engine driving a propeller through a gear. You can put um, an asynchronous machine driven by that gear. And this can provide power to the grid or take power from the grid. If we're taking power from the grid, so we're using it in asynchronous being in generator mode, it's still driving a propeller, but it's driving the asynchronous machine which feeds the inverter and the power grid. If we go into motor mode, we've got power coming in from the grid, we take away the engine drive, put power to the motor, and now the motor is driving the propeller. Often uh, the motor is going to be less powerful than the engine, but not always. Sometimes it can get up there. Uh, with the synchronous machine system, we have the addition of a, po a pony motor. This is a pony motor that gets the synchronous machine rotor spinning because a synchronous machine can't operate from zero speed. It has to be, it has some, some motion before you can use it as a uh, a motor. So if it's in generator mode, that's just the same as any old generator mode. The pony motor is motor's not needed. Um, the main engine's driving the gear, then the synchronous machine into the inverter and onto the power grid. In motor mode, we are going to put power into the inverter. We're going to get the pony motor connected, get the machine spinning, and then we can uh, put power to the machine and drive the propeller. Now, Morelli does have an option of a synchronous machine, um, hybrid shaft generator variable speed thruster motor that does not need a pony motor. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how that works. If he's working as a, a generator, you put mechanical shaft power in, you get the rotor spinning, and that gets the exciter moving and the PMG for the uh, AVR. Once you've got that, then you can start to take electrical power out. In this case, this is a real machine. It's a 4100 kVA machine, uh, 4160 volts. If we put it in motor mode, remember we don't have a pony motor. In this case, you have an AC exciter. This AC exciter will get the shaft uh, energized. Once you've got the shaft energized, then you can power up the data with electrical power and you can get power out. Neat. So in PTO mode, the power for this machine was 2500 kW at 4000 volts. Like it. Okay, as I said, I'm going to finish off with our uh, test room capabilities. Test room in Italy is 3000 square meters of floor space, 32,000 square feet. Uh, they can test machines, both motors and generators, with voltages from 380 to 15,000. The maximum weight of machine that we can lift in there is 50 tons, which is considerable. The speed of machines that we can test is all the way down from 187 up to 3,600 rush a minute. The low speed machines are likely to be hydro generators. Frequency can be 50 or 60. We've got a great skilled team uh, and 14 benches, so we're going to do a lot of testing at any one time. 
Okay, guys, I say um, thank you for listening to me. And our next webinar will be announced shortly.